Welcome to our lesson about the Trim Extend tool. Let's start by activating this tool. First thing to do is select the bodies to trim. I've selected structural member 4. Next thing to do is specify the trimming boundary. I'm going to use the bodies type and then select this structural member here. The allow extension option is checked. This makes structural member 4 extend as we see in my preview here. Down below, we've got two options, a simple or straight cut between bodies and a coped cut between the bodies. If the simple cut option is selected, we're able to set up a weld gap. Right now, it's 10 millimeters. Let's click OK to see how it looks. All right, let's activate the Trim Extend tool again. Under Bodies to be trimmed, we'll select the same structural member. For the trimming boundary, we're going to select some different structural members. These two here. Here we can decide which segments to keep or disregard. Once again, we've got the same options down below, a straight or coped cut. I'm going to opt for the straight cut. Let's change the gap distance. I'll make it 3 millimeters. Tab key. And then let's click OK. Let's activate the Trim Extend tool again. Under Bodies to Trim, I'm going to select this one here. Trimming Boundary. Let's select this body here. Under Corner Type, we've got four options. End Trim, End Miter, End Butt 1, and End Butt 2. If I select the last three options, both structural members become trimmed. Down below, we can also select a simple or coped cut, as well as specify the weldment gap. At this point, I'll click OK. Let me find out why the bottom and right segments were cut out. Let's expand structural member 2 in our Feature Manager tree. There's sketch 12, that's my profile sketch. We can see it right here. Basically, the side on which the profile sketch originated was kept, and the other side was cut out. OK, let's suppress Trim Extend 3. Right-click, Suppress, and activate the tool again. Let's change the corner type and select the bodies to be trimmed. We'll select Structural Member 2. Now the trimming boundary. We'll use the Face Plane method this time and make our selection of faces. OK, let's specify the weld gap, the cut direction, and the segments to keep or discard. Let's click OK now. And let's move to our next example. I want to trim this structural member and create openings for these two beams. Let's activate the Trim Extend tool. Select the bodies to be trimmed. Now I'll select the trimming boundary, structural member 1 and 2. Uncheck Allow Extension. Once again, we can choose between a straight or coped cut. We enter a value for the weld gap here. Notice that the coped cut doesn't offer the option to use a weld gap. And of course, we've got a workaround for this. For example, we can create a simple cut and then apply a fillet afterward. Let's click OK for now. For this example, let's try a different method. I'm going to go to the Surfaces tab, and let's activate the Offset Surface tool. And I'm going to make my selection of surfaces. Offset Distance, let's make it 3 millimeters, and click OK. Let's activate the Offset Surface tool again. Make our selection of surfaces. Offset Distance, again 3 millimeters, and click OK. Now I'm going to cut the structural member using surfaces. Let's go to Insert on the Windows menu strip. Cut with Surface. Let's select Surface Offset 1. Uncheck Auto Select. Select Structural Member 2. 
Be sure the direction to cut is correct. Let's click OK. And let's make a second cut now. Insert, Cut with Surface. This time select Surface Offset 2. Uncheck Auto Select. Let's select Surface Cut 1. Be sure the cut is going in the right direction. And let's click OK. Now let's hide both surface bodies. And we have our result. This concludes our lesson about the Trim Extend tool.